Hello, <laughs> hey it's guys. me. I was wondering if, if after all these t- years uh, you liked me. I love Adele. Really? You don't? I, I do. I love Adele. Divorce by divorce. <laughs> that like her Instagram lives. Bring them back. Guys, why did you guys make Adele stop the Instagram live? Is that from her Instagram live? Yeah, she would just go on like Instagram live. That's funny. I'm pretty sure that was from She's kind of queen. She's like so random. Adele's random? Yeah. I feel like she popped out of nowhere and just started seeing Rolling in the Deep. What was that? What was the big one? Was it Hello? You're gonna wish you never had let me. We could have had it all. Yeah, like that was just like such a hit when it came out. Yeah. And she went, won every single Grammy. Is the Grammys that, that are music? Yeah, Grammys are music. Okay, yeah, she yes. won like every single one that year. Um, and then she left for a little. Me um, giving the backstory of Adele, no one asked for. It's okay, we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it from you. But um, hello everybody and welcome to the podcast that's all about Adele. Um, no, I'm just kidding. This is bookmarked with Sarah and Des. If you guys back. are looking for the Adele podcast, you're going to have to find that somewhere else on the internet because that's not here, babe. Okay? This is a podcast that specializes in misinformation because me and Sarah speak on what our little mental pieces have yeah. left behind and not factual never a fact no never don't a fact. ever take what we say as fact never take Please. what we say as a fact we don't even take what we say as a fact no. we're just like i think that's what it is <laughs> and that's what i'm gonna go yeah. for but welcome back to bookmark hope back. you guys are ready to enjoy if you <laughs> ready to enjoy um if you guys are watching this when it comes out no i'm no longer in new jersey can you believe that everyone start crying everyone hey everyone send a picture of you guys crying but no actually i'm not in jersey this is a pre-filmed epi epi i've never said epi but this is a pre-filmed episode because when me and sarah are together we film we, we film, film podcast podcasts. episodes <laughs> so this is the one we filmed the one that was last week's yesterday so these are like a back-to-back episode this yeah. is crazy back-to-back episode. and she leaves about. me tomorrow so tomorrow things are not looking up right now hello from me i just need to like get <laughs> why get adele? adele i don't know we haven't listened to adele i think it's because i was like saying hello and then like you know just automatically yeah, you think of come, adele yeah that's hello? just how it is like no, i can't i don't make the rules but <laughs> anyway let's Anyways. get into it what are our drinks of the episode this one's crazy this We've one never is had crazy quirky the same drink time. in an episode i feel like no because i'm always popping up yeah Milani. i haven't had one in a few days that's like we crazy. have to get you one so iced matcha latte almond milk and sweet cream cold foam yes right on top of that and i got the same thing well just the iced matcha latte with vanilla cold foam i got a tall mm. i didn't want coffee i don't know some days you wake up and you just don't want coffee i feel like when i've been drinking it sometimes i, I get anxious yeah i get that or i'll make myself feel like i'm getting anxious when i'm not actually so my so i stopped for a few days my thing is that we're going to barnes later and i was like barnes makes the best coffee they just do yeah that's valid it is valid i'm gonna get a refresher later oh, that's so just i'm really excited sarah said no coffee for me today Mm-mm. um but on the topic of drinks of the episode i've been enjoying seeing the tags that's and my favorite you guys thing. getting alani's yeah your watered down drinks in honor of sarah become like a thing <laughs> we need to like slap that on a piece of merch about your watered, watered down, down drinks listen they st- they still taste good to me it's like a thing i, I just i can't I'm what l- was it yesterday oh like when we filmed the podcast ep- episode yesterday i didn't you can tell like i took like a sip of my drink yeah and like we drink we had them before that episode, yeah so, like it was drinking ready but they were so watered down <laughs> and i just like even editing it seeing sarah just like drink hers i was like <laughs> i'm glad that other people identify watered down drinks though yeah like i'm not alone here that is and i've been seeing you guys crack open and try your alani yeah so i hope you've been enjoying that i love the dotes the dotes are so fun they are so I'm fun glad that we ma- like it, it's like a thing like when we post episodes people post their dotes oh, yeah hey guys this is our drinking episode it's i so love cute. that seeing everyone's I love it. dotes it's because we're such drink girlies yeah but anyway being a girly you have like a drink you get a little drink you drink i know you know yes if, if you want to do something like go get a drink that's what i'm saying get a refresher get a I can't whatever go through the day without having a drink yeah like, I have to. Like, if I'm, like, going to edit, like, I need a drink next to me. No, like, sometimes Not I'll, water. <laughs> no, I'll, like, always have my Stanley. Sometimes I will literally yeah. go downstairs and grab an Alani and not even open it. Do you know that? I just have to feel like I have a drink. Yeah, yeah that's why sometimes mine get watered down. Yeah. Like, I get a drink, but I won't drink it. Yeah. It's just a, being a girl. <laughs> that's just being a girl, guys, so. I'm um, just a girl. I'm just a girl <laughs> in the world. Me and Sarah probably say that ten times a day. We just probably. say, oh, just two little girls. I just, I'm just a girl. Like, whenever I do something wrong, I'm just a girl. Yeah. I literally don't know what I'm doing. Just kidding. Women do know what they're doing. Anyway, on that topic, today's episode, 
last episode was catching up with us what yeah. we've been doing and our little lives yeah and like our little in our little lives what's going on what's up and i thought it would be interesting just on this episode oh my god it's gonna be so old by the time that it comes out but it's fine no it's okay like, it's only a two no a week yeah big week things different. big things that have been happening around the media and around yeah. our little globe instead of catching up with us we're catching up with yeah the world almost. we're catching up the world so we can talk about uh we Life. both saw the barbie movie barbie movie uh last night what happened last night yeah we watched um we watched the last night of the airs tour on tiktok yes. live last night um, um what's been happening books book, book world in the book world what's been happening i don't know but we'll figure it out we will figure it out so <laughs> let's just get straight into that All shall right. we should we start with taylor swift i feel like that's most recent absolutely like it's we most start. like in my brain right now like i'm still there yeah <laughs> it was rare i was there exactly i remember it we weren't gonna long. watch the live no well we okay so the original plan you were like we can watch it but then you told me you're like it'll probably start like around 12 like the songs like the surprise songs yeah i forgot how long her concerts are and yeah they started her concert started at 11 eastern time but i forgot like <laughs> she sings so many songs oh yeah and then so like sarah was like okay and then it turned into like by the middle of the day she was like yeah i don't think i'm gonna stay up for that and then i was like yeah i think i'm gonna try to like watch as much as i can i was gonna set an alarm yeah and be like we should just but i didn't know what time but then it like i kept on seeing people like theorize on tiktok and i was like i just have to stay like it was yeah. pure adrenaline that was keeping well, me well the up. whole concert there was all little like easter eggs going on so we didn't miss yeah. really anything so we saw stuff. she opened up with lover yeah obviously she opened up with lover and she had on like a blue i think it was a bluish bodysuit for lover yeah don't think, think it was it like was. the og bodysuit and she had on, no. she had a blue microphone yeah she did have a blue microphone and i was like oh blue microphone but then i saw somebody like in the live comments was like she's had that before like she had that in march yeah whatever I was like, and okay. the man was her bedazzled it was like silver laser was it silver or maybe it was blue but it, on live it looked silver like it looked yeah, like yeah. the same um so we're like watching it she's like introing the concert she's talking and even um evermore the evermore dress was still yellow yeah and she had a blue guitar for one of the or she didn't change her outfit she held a guitar yeah it was like a blue guitar and um or maybe it was i don't know i can't remember but then i think what was the first one that she came out and it was like the enchanted blue. dress was blue the enchanted dress was blue it was different it was blue and folklore's dress was blue right and, yes and folklore's dress was blue and also midnight's dress was blue but that was like after yeah everything. i don't even remember seeing Midnight's. Um, <laughs> but and like when she was singing the one like there were just these like little like you could feel it in the crowd and also because like if you're a taylor swift fan you guys would know like she does like these little easter eggs she's very intentional with every little thing she does yeah. like she plans so ahead yes. in advance with some get. artist it could be like oh this is just like a coincidence because they yeah. don't think this hard like no nothing is a coincidence that's why i love how like creative not creative i don't know the word smart maybe like seeing like tiktoks of taylor swift fans like swifties like trying to figure out what's going on oh, and yeah. going through like every little detail like it's nothing i would ever figure no. out but they make so much sense thank god for them yeah because they figured yeah. this out and it was it was correct well because my first thing was like a few days ago because she was playing at sofi stadium in la for i think six nights in a row it was all sold out and the, her last obviously yesterday's date was august 8th which is 0809 which is 89 and taylor swift was born in 1989 and also the album 1989 which it happens to be my absolute favorite taylor swift album and i well it's 1989 speak folklore now. speak uh, now oh folklore is about speak now yeah mine always change right now it's folklore i've been in folklore mood all summer folklore um <laughs> <laughs> i i always love folklore i can listen to cardigan over and over again yeah valid i uh, love it anyway <laughs> So, I had seen a TikTok a few days ago that was like, I think that she's going to announce 1989 Taylor's version because it's 8-9. It's the, like, whatever concert. Like, even, um, I think Taylor, it was either Taylor Nation or SoFi Stadium posted, like, a post that was like, 8-whatever, yeah, 9. I think, didn't they post a picture on the beach and on, like, the little lifeguard center or some stand? It just said 1989. Yes. I saw that, too. Like, little things. And it was, it was like, very... It was almost, like, obvious, but, like, people were saying, like, maybe they're making it too obvious that it's not gonna happen. Yeah. But it was, like, in the blue. And then at one point before she announces it, um, if you went on her website, it was, like, just blue with seagulls. Yeah. And yeah. the goosebumps that I'm still getting <laughs> talking about it. No, like, it's, like, actual 
whatever so i was yeah, so excited it was all happening so quick and me and sarah were just like reading our books and i said and i looked over at one point and i was like it's like we're just like listening to our music but we're just like you were yeah. like listening to the live version it's like a live version of listening to our music for yeah hours. but then like the live would like pause for a second she'd be like i'm just like checking my battery the girl was doing live and i was like girl yeah i kept pause. and it, she did that right while she was like about to announce it and yes. it kept saying like video pause and like it wasn't there and we were like not the time oh no and then at one point like if you're gonna do a tiktok live for this reason right she's like about to announce it the girl flips the camera around on her face, yeah, on her face. and <laughs> she was like this is like for me like this is for me like i don't know if she's trying to like capture the moment but i was like have one of your friends i see her friends like have one of your friends record your yeah. reaction yeah that was crazy like but i honestly i, I said shout out the girl on tiktok live i couldn't oh you said she you might have a tripod yeah because i, I saw a bunch of people who it. were doing that they were the in the box that's what that's where oh, they were they were in the box okay, that makes sense so i think that they brought in like a tripod because other people that do the lives like the whole concert like your arms gotta hurt oh yeah i was filming like not even the whole concert when i was there filming some parts my my arms hurt yeah because i could tell because it wasn't shaky like it was just kind of like yeah actually yeah stands now that i think about that and um she so whatever she sings all these songs she's wearing blue i'm like there's no way like in my brain there was absolutely no way that nothing was happening yeah i knew she was gonna do new romantics as a surprise song i just knew that yeah that was like the main the main thing and yes. even if she didn't announce 1989 everyone's just waiting for new romantics yeah that was and the last 1989 song for her to sing everybody though did guess 1989 in new year's day yeah which like, is crazy everyone, why new year's day how did they know that one i forget what i saw a tiktok of why they thought it was uh, new year's day i, I like, like that remember. song i never really listened to it but i do like that song i like that song there's the Sweet. bridge in that song yeah. is whatever. Well, I don't listen to that song a lot. I feel like I kind of mm. skip that song, but anyway. It's, like, not a bad song when I hear it, though, but I feel like it's not one, it's on. not one that you can just, like, put on in your... No. Anyway, <laughs> so she is about to do the surprise song. She goes out, and she's, like, talking about the tour, and she's like, this is amazing. Yeah, her little speech. Um, her little speech, and then she's like, I have been working on something, and mm-hmm. t- Sarah was like, "What? What's she saying?" And I was like, "She said she's been working on something. Like this is the moment. Like she's gonna say it." And then I kept on joking with Sarah. I was like, "What if she's doing all this and then she announces Reputation?" Yeah. I thought that would have been so funny. <laughs> that would have been so funny. She's wearing all blue and someone, she's like, "Whatever." Someone thought she was gonna do that and she was gonna be like, "I guess you guys weren't ready for it." And then it was gonna no, but that would have been like <laughs> iconic. I would have accepted that. So would I. That would have been so funny. I would have been upset, but I I still would have loved it. But she was like, "I'm not gonna say it. I'm just gonna show you." And then like the camera showed like the album oh yeah. my god the goosebumps i'm getting because yeah. like, she's smiling on the album the album cover is so beautiful she looks so beautiful she and her oh, short hair yeah. like because she didn't cut her hair it looks like the wind is like sweeping her oh, hair it and it so made beautiful. it just where she looked like she had the bob like she did in that era when she announced it though she was like i have something to show you or yeah. i don't know what she, she said. said i'm not gonna say it i'm just gonna show and you I, in my head because i'm delusional about this because destiny keeps talking about it is harry styles being on this album in my head i was like yeah maybe he'll come out it's my favorite thing to do to like <laughs> say that to sarah like i'm always like what what would you do if like what would you do if harry got featured and she's like no she's no. really putting it in my head i told her i wouldn't listen to it <laughs> i sarah wouldn't be just able never to like listen it. to it it's no. just it would be iconic but i hi- it gives me heart palpitations honestly there's like a what like a five percent chance i feel like of that yeah, actually being I think real there's like a one percent like i don't the harry would i don't think no. it would happen and especially a song about him i don't know i just feel like no i don't know no but she also said there's five vault tracks oh, i'm so i think so, they're gonna be my favorite vault tracks oh yeah i'm so excited yeah. that's my favorite era of hers too like of just like herself mm. like i just i think it's because it reminds me i remember being in um sixth grade when i was like listening to 1989 and it came out and i can just remember like going to it's like so engraved in my brain listening to blank space sitting in um a girl i was friends with when i was young i was sitting in her mom's car and it was like me her mom my mom we were all sitting in the car we were listening to blank space because we had the cd and we were like getting our starbucks frappuccinos mm-hmm. and we had just bought dresses for the dance Aww, and like we played so it at the cute. dance like that's just like yeah what plays in my head like very childhood-esque so i was like oh yeah. i'm so excited i don't remember what grade i was in i remember making what was the name of that app that you can make like videos to like you make videos and it like dub smash? cuts it into was it dub smash i used to make so many out of the woods i thought it was so fun oh yeah i used to make little videos with me and my friends at dance i loved it so much so i'm so excited I and i just feel yeah, like, i'm happy this one's next i feel like with speak now like when we talk about speak now and i still feel this way when i do listen to speak now taylor's version is like with like haunted and with um what other song is it i just feel like the emotion like isn't 
Like it still. I think because the amazing. album came out when she was so young to, to yeah. redo it and have the same emotion Better at thirty. Than revenge. It's I just know not it's just the, hard though because like you're so used to those. Yeah. Being so. And like, she sounds so different now. Yeah. She's just older. And she's older, but I think with 1989, it's just like a fun album. Yeah. Like she's oh, having I love fun it. with yeah, that I'm album. So it was like I'm very excited just to have fun right yeah, along with her. Yeah. When that comes out, I'm so excited to listen to that, and then it's gonna be like nearing fall winter, and then you yeah. can listen to Evermore and get in the Evermore mood. Oh yeah. That's gonna be so good. It it is such a wild time though because 1989 is not a fall and not a winter no, album. I was just thinking that, yeah. It's a spring summer album. I feel like I was thinking about this the other day because all I've been listening to is Taylor Swift because she's been coming out with so not new music but like all of her like like vaults and whatever are coming out. And like Taylor Swift is like, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. And I was thinking about the other day, I was like, she's going to be my number one artist next year. Like Harry's been my number one artist forever. And I'm like, I yeah. feel so wrong. It's but, just so hard though because he like kind of fell off the grid after. He just hasn't come out with new music in, yeah. in a bit. Because Taylor's been, like, popping out with all this yeah. stuff. And I'm like, this is crazy. He can't take the moment away from mom. No. He can't do it. I love my parents. So it's yeah. fine. He's, like, very respectful. He's, he's like, not. I can't do this to her. I love him so much. Literally. <laughs> the best. But. I saw a picture of him this morning. And he's <sighs> he's away. And he has, like, a tan. His hair has grown out. And he looks Aww. great. He looks so good. He has a little mustache. And I love him. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Sarah got a Polaroid. She was showing me the Polaroid. Oh, yeah. I got, um... Well, stickers like the, and she said and she sent like um this some stickers are Polaroids of like Harry Harry and Nile and stuff but she sent one it's like a Polaroid and it looks like she like legit took a Polaroid picture of Harry Styles like it looks like real yeah like and I don't know how she she got that picture in there to make it look like <laughs> oh it literally looks like she was sitting there and was like Harry and like just took a picture. yeah iconic what a great picture to put in there too because it looks real yeah. instead of just like a yeah like concert photo it does so cute but um, anyway yeah that's what's been going on with that i'm so excited about that i think she just uh, she loves her fans so much like to just do all of that and do all these surprises and like feed into like all the theories and the easter eggs i think it's just so fun like she has fun with it and that's what i want every artist to do i wish every artist was like that like very much like in tune with their audience yeah and i feel like she's always been like that like i feel like she's always really cared about she has fun with it too yeah and she loves it too and i love you seeing that see too it. yeah like when she's on the stage you said she was frolicking yeah, like, yeah Aww, it looks like it's she's so just cute. like having the best time yeah. ever especially it's so refreshing to see too after reputation because you have to think like being taylor swift living through her actual like reputation era like it's it's like an era for us but it was like an actual yeah, real life event life. for her yeah. and now like I don't know it just sucks because it's like the court of public opinion now that she's like on the good side of the court of public opinion and you can see like how happy she is yeah. and it just sucks because like during the reputation era when everyone was yeah, just no up the kardashian's ass and they were like oh d- like did a snake snake like yeah. girl yeah, it's crazy now kanye west can't wait for that album to come out i know i can't wait that re-recording is crazy mm, i can't Uh, wait i love that album too kind of on the same topic because i feel like the same type of feeling is the barbie movie Mm -hmm. which can i just say i am sad that taylor swift wasn't on the album like that she didn't do a song for that yeah that would have been iconic I feel like that would have been There's so good. There's a lot of Lizzo songs. Or was, did they just keep replaying it? No, it was the one song. Like, when you know when you watch the movie and it opens with a song yeah. and then it changes to the bad day one? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah just I feel two. like I was hearing a lot of Lizzo. Maybe it was just that. No, they used it, like, multiple times throughout the movie. Yeah. But it was the same song. Yeah. We, every time I say something or someone's saying something, I'm like, you should go watch the Barbie movie. Yeah. Like, anything that's negative, I'm like, go watch Barbie. Yes. I literally begged Sarah. I told her... I was like talking. I th- I've been saving like a lot of Barbie movie TikToks, and then I was like, "Sarah, you literally have to go and watch it before I'm come here because I need to talk about it on the podcast. And you need to know." Yeah, what I'm I watched talking it about. the night before you came. Yeah, yeah, I know. She sent me a picture, and I was like, "Good, you did your homework." <laughs> but, it felt um, like not a homework, but like it was like a, it was an yeah, assignment for me. Yeah, it was an assignment, and I just have to say, like, so when the Barbie movie trailer came out, I and I literally looked at my mom in the movie theater. I said, "This was a genius move on their part to not market." the movie to be what it actually was i thought that too because when you see the trailer it just looks like a little barbie fun like they're going Ken, on a little bar- adventure yeah yeah i agree because yeah and i didn't know that it was about that and if i didn't see everyone talking about like women empowerment whatever on like tiktok and stuff and i went into it would have yeah. no idea the no. true message of like what it is i literally went on opening night on the thursday yeah on the thursday that the movie came out and i sat down with my mom and i thought oh this is just gonna be like a little fun adventure like they're gonna talk about the history barbie and she's gonna go to the real world and they gotta get her back because Mm -hmm. it's barbie land and then once the movie kind of started getting into those like 
themes yeah, and the, messages the i looked at her and i was like they are so smart because here's the messed up thing if they marketed if it they as that, marketed it yeah. as that people wouldn't be people going. wouldn't have wanted because and here's like the super sad fact like you even saw like guys talking about barbie like they were like oppenheimer barbie and there's like a part of you that wonders if they had from the jump put out what it was yeah, if the guys would have been that supportive because i saw have. after like majority boys men seeing it they keep saying it's just like a feminist movie yes. it's like whatever and i'm like that's the whole the whole point of the movie is like you guys being kins how you in the are worst way possible yeah and it didn't even change how some of them feel yeah. about it they're just yeah. like Ugh. So, oh it just blows my mind. it's so if you guys haven't watched the barbie movie we are going to be getting into a discussion about it you can skip around i always have the timestamps. if you guys ever need the timestamps, they're always on the youtube and if you guys go to the spotify i literally in every single episode have the timestamps, so you can see when we start talking about it and when we stop talking about it but we're going to start talking about it now so yeah, go, go in the description yeah go and if the, you click the little time yeah. stamp, it'll go there yeah so that way you don't get any spoilers but we are going to get into it so I was so sad, but it was so purposeful about um, when in the movie, when Ken, like when they describe Ken and he's like, he doesn't have a good day unless Barbie looks at him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's like very like kind. Yeah. But, like all the Kens like yeah. love the Barbies. Like yeah. they're literally like so wonderful how you wish men in the real world yeah. are. Like Barbies are, are yes. not better than them, but like in the Barbie world, they and look up to Barbie. Know, I don't know if I, I think I came to this conclusion myself. So please. I'm sure somebody else has said this, but, like, also, this is not fact. This is just me theorizing. Like, in the beginning, you know, because, like, the whole entire thing is, like, they kind of get their cognitive minds from, like, the kids that played with them. Yeah. Yeah. And it reminds me of, like, say that it's somebody, like, whether that's a boy or a girl playing with a Kindle. But I kind of was, like, it's, like, a boy when he's young and he doesn't know to yeah, essentially men. hate women yeah. like society makes you do yeah that's why in the barbie world it's like yeah. perfect like that and that's what it felt like like ken is like when you're a little boy and you're not exposed to society and how society tells men essentially how they should be treating yeah. women and how little boys look at like girls or whatever and they're like oh my gosh like even if it's just in a friendly way like you're just so awesome like yeah. i love you you know whatever and then they get grow yeah, up before you get like the yeah the notions that and they put see the head. real world they see the other guys that tell you it's not cool to like be yeah. nice and be respectful and then they turn yeah. into moto dojo kin <laughs> and it sucks yeah when they grow up they get it rubs off on them yeah of how they act but because even like when ken goes into the real world when he like separates from barbie and she's like don't go far and he's like, i'm not <laughs> that was yeah. so funny well i guess we'll get into we'll go through the movie i guess yeah we'll get into that part but he like so the movie starts out and you're in barbie land and like well they first did an introduction to barbie and like yeah, showed all cute. the barbies and it i watched it two times and the second time around it genuinely did make me tear up because thinking of the like notion of genuinely like you gotta think it was like what the 40s or 50s when barbie was Long created time. and then barbie dolls come out and it's the first time that little girls are shown that you can be whatever you want to be. Yeah. Like, you can be a firefighter. You can be a doctor. You can be an astronaut. And it was, like, the first time that little girls were uplifted in a way that it was, like, you don't have to be a stay-at-home mom, but if you want to, yeah. that's I like that fine. they started the movie out like that. Yeah. And then you go into Barbara and you see all those Barbies there. Yeah, because I liked it. the beginning it. was so cute. and Because she's in the dream house. Yeah. And you see her, like, doing all her things, like, pouring the, the containers that don't have anything in them. Yeah, because like, it's like we a Barbie. Because we used to play with them. Like, that's yeah. exactly what we were doing. And she, like, floats down because yeah. you don't actually put your Barbies down Yeah, the they steps. don't walk down the stairs. No. You, you just put them in the yeah. car. Oh, my God, it was so... I love that they did that. Like, I they made it feel the real Barbie. details and how they, like, move because yeah. like, that's just And the shower, when she's showering and no water comes out. Like she just has to stay in there oh my god i loved that it was just so cute because that's like how we played with barbie yes i loved it so much i loved how intentional they were with everything yeah, like the, the ocean when you go to the ocean it's just like a little yeah just like a, a stand of water just hits it yeah like it's not real water yeah like they didn't make it like a real like live barbie no it's like real barbie world yeah oh i loved that so much and i loved it too because it was like you know in barbie world you know because all the barbies it's like president barbie and it's like yeah. you know whatever like it's just the women rule barbie land yeah 
and so we were looking at all of that and then i thought it was funny too like when ken gets hurt when he like hits the wave yeah and then they're like you're gonna be fine by the time they finish that sentence like you're fine i'm like because it also yeah. like when you're a kid and you like say you act like your barbie's hurt and then it's just like how your kid mind works you just automatically forget about yeah. it she was like yeah after this might finish the sentence you'll be fine yeah because that's how kids <laughs> yeah, are they just forget funny. that that was like even a thing yeah that was cute and so i just love those like yeah like the little intentional thing they're in barbie land and then slowly like they're you know they're dancing and then they're having a cute little also i loved the dancing scene when they're yeah, all at cute. the house dancing yeah oh my god it was so cute and ken's like hold my drink i'm gonna go <laughs> yeah because he noticed his little other friend Ken's dancing with Barbie. his little friend ken that was like just behind him with everything because he like handed him the drink and then he started dancing and the ken was like i gotta start dancing too oh Ken's god, wait dancing. no i don't think i remember oh my gosh yeah it was his like friend like they were together like the whole movie and the friend was so supportive i just remember the other ken that was flirting with barbie and he would get so mad oh no it wasn't that yeah no <laughs> was that i don't remember ken? the other one but um it's hard because they're all ken and they're all barbie but um yeah so then they do that and then like she's dancing and she's like have you guys ever thought about dying and they're like yeah. girl like you just she ruined the having, vibe. like thoughts that barbies yeah. don't have yeah and so long story short all this happens she's like go into the weird barbie which is like the barbie which i never had a weird barbie because i, mean, I, I was wasn't so allowed there with my dolls yeah i suppose my grandma had all the barbies and it like wasn't allowed to obviously you just cut, cut the hair them. and start drawing um, on their faces no that's what it uh i never had a weird barbie because i would like pop the feet off well one <laughs> i didn't play with barbie like i didn't i played with brats and monster high dolls i didn't play with barb i had like a few barbies but, like bar brats was my thing i loved brats but i loved the barbie movies like i watched the barbie mm -hmm. movies but it never made me want barbie a barbie movies. doll really yeah like i, I had a few just, brats but I, I loved barbies so much i think it's because well like barbies are very empowering and so are the brats dolls but to me my personality matched the brats like they were fashion yeah the, the brats movies i like better than the barbie movies yeah i love the brass movies all of them like the cartoon little ones and the, oh, the real live version i love ones. them oh i love those movies so much those i literally make my niece watch them sometimes i turn <laughs> on the brats tv show and like oh i, I sit it. there and watch it because yeah, it's, it's like they were teenagers and it was yeah. kind of just like how yeah, teenagers I think I are watching and like playing with bar brats when i got older yeah because barbies i feel like are your first introduction to, to oh i was playing with brats since i was like two <laughs> or three like i was like in it i was but barbie and american girl doll those were my two. Oh my gosh i was, when I was just younger. brats and then when i was getting out of the doll stage i was monster high yeah, after doll stage, I don't think I build a bear. I went to build a bear. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, oh my god, I I tore up build a bear too. But um, I didn't really play with Barbies. But she goes to the weird Barbie, and the weird Barbie's like, you have to go to the real world and find who's playing with you because that's why all of this is happening. So she's going to the real world, and yeah. Ken is like, I'm coming with you. Yeah. And she's like, Did you bring your rollerblades? <laughs> yeah, it's like a funny moment and they're going through and as soon as she goes into the real world and she's in her little cute 80s rollerblading outfit it immediately starts it immediately Ugh. starts you just tell like even without anyone saying anything you just like it's like real like she that's said, how people like react and it was so oh my gosh spot on because she says everyone's staring at me but it feels like like a, it's a bad like, feeling unsafe she's yeah. like it doesn't feel and safe and ken said he felt admired yes when everyone was staring at him and yes. she didn't have a good feeling everyone's staring because, because yeah as, as a woman people people are staring at you you think like the negative especially when men are staring at you the you just male gaze yeah it just really does not you just don't want to be out in public in front of them no and she could she didn't understand that because obviously in barbie world like, yeah it's the opposite of what's going on yeah she's like i don't feel safe and he was like i do yeah, i feel i'm like yeah because you as like it's just not something that yeah, they don't like, get it if a man is looking at a man it usually is an admiration yeah. we'll say 80 percent of the time probably never in a sexual and like really way when a man looks at a woman because yeah, immediately after that a man came up to barbie yes they immediately get almost like very aggressive with it you yeah. know like as a woman if a guy is looking at you and finds you attractive i would say nine times out of ten it's just immediately aggressive just off the no bat boundaries like they are like you owe them something yeah. just for existing and it's funny though because even if it's like a man looks at like if i'm walking somewhere and a man looks at me even if he doesn't mean it intentionally bad like immediately in my head i'm thinking it's a bad thing oh, yeah. like right before the barbie movie we were walking in and there was like a, a father and a daughter walking in front of us and he kept turning around and i looked at chris and i was like if he turns around like one more time like it's making me uncomfortable yeah. like obviously i don't know if he was doing it in a way like maybe he's just looking for someone i don't know but in my head i always have to think like i don't know why he's looking back but that's just how it is i know that's just the I just, world that we yeah. live in oh it just bothered me and then i saw that in the movie yeah as soon as the men started looking at it i was like it's really just a a thing that we we do yeah and then yeah the guy comes up to barbie and slaps her on the butt and she like punches him and then they get arrested and it's like but why are you getting arrested when he yeah she's the one that gets arrested for punching the guy that hit her also why did ken get arrested 
<laughs> was it just for the movie? You know what? They were still ride or die at that point. Yeah. So maybe he did something to yeah, defend she her. She got arrested for yeah. projecting herself. Yes. So they're trying to figure out. She's like, who is this person that's playing with me? She starts seeing these visions. She's like, I have to go to this school. Mm-hmm. So then she's like trying to figure it out. Her and Ken split up because he's kind of bored. He's Which like, she shouldn't okay. have let him split up. Because no. that's the, his downfall. Because he, he found goes, men. Yeah, he found <laughs> Men. He found the patriarchy and yes. what He thought it meant, what is it, horses? Horses. <laughs> that was so Which funny. is so funny because <laughs> everything had horses on it. And he was yeah, figuring out what the patriarchy Yeah, men on horses. Yeah, like all the history books. Because when they go to school and he's like, look, it's a man on a horse. Yeah. Like he thought he was that like that. fascinated by that men have like power. Because yeah. obviously it's different. Because in, in Barbie Land, the girls run everything and the guys are kind of like what women are in our society. And like it's just also just showing in like a few split seconds, like the guys at the gym. Yeah, and then he was like, "Look, oh at yeah, them. And, it has then, like a li- and it has like that little like collage of like powerful men of all the presidents, like George pre- Bush. Yeah, and then they and put like, that Rocky guy. Yeah, they put like all like Rocky big. Balboa. Yeah, and then he saw like when he was in the business, and like the woman tries to go up and like say something, and they're like, "Not now!" Like how yeah. they just brush and like, how the off. whole Barbie team is just all men. Yes, I love Will Ferrell. Yeah, <laughs> he's such a great actor. I love him. <laughs> I feel like he's gotten so, like I mean he's always been a comedian, but like I feel like he's leaned more into like the like he did a musical with Ryan Reynolds over Christmas. Oh, he time. did. Yeah, I watched it. It was <gasps> so good. I love. Will I really Ferrell. liked it. Yeah, I love him. And <laughs> not in the um, movie, but yeah, not in the movie. But I just love him as a person. Yeah. And so he like comes back with this newfound knowledge that like there's a patriarchy and yeah. what that means. And that and men can have men are powerful power. and women are less than them. Because that's just <laughs> how it is. Like that's just how society views women. Like that's just how it is. And this hit so hard because he goes up. They did like a few little things where he goes up to this guy and he's like, I want a job. And he's like, Well, you would need like a oh, yeah. whatever, like college degree. And he's like but well, I'm a man. man. Isn't yeah. that enough? Literally. The man was like, yes, but we're trying to hide it more now. Yeah, because he was like, oh, yeah, but like with everything nowadays, like, yeah, we can't just like outwardly say that because that's literally the world yeah. that we live in. So that crazy. is quite literally the world that we live in. And it is that. He went of, to the, the doctor's office, too. Yeah. And he was like, can I talk to a doctor? She's like, I am a doctor. Yeah, and he, he was, was looking like, for a man. Yeah, he ran over to find the man nurse or something like that. Yeah. yeah that but was do you know too. how many women deal with that? They have taken years to put in an education to be a doctor and they get mistaken for a nurse. Yeah. Or where's the male doctor? They know more than you. Like, it <sighs> honestly is so sad and wakes. It's like, are we ever going to escape that notion like, no. of where's a man? Like, I don't know. I think it's also like old school stuff is still like yeah how women are supposed to be housewives and stuff are still yeah. like prevalent in some some places oh no like when guys are like you like in the movie when they are like having them basically wait on them yeah serve us food be yeah. in the kitchen yeah do all of this but she goes to the school and she thinks that this girl this like teenage girl is the one who had been playing with her it's not she goes up to the, this is actually an easter egg that people figured out what when she goes up to the table, the main girl's name is Sasha. Yeah. And it's Chloe, yeah, that, Jade, and Yasmin. All the Bratz dolls. It's uh, all the Bratz dolls. I love that. And you notice, because she also kind of dresses like a Bratz yeah, doll. She yeah. doesn't dress like a Barbie. They look like Bratz dolls. Yeah, It was they really did. cute. It was so cute. I love that they did that. And she was basically tells Barbie that Barbie is very damaging to society and has damaged and, like, caused like, a lot of problems for yeah. women. Like, the way that they see women having to be perfect and yeah, all this stuff. Yeah, all of that. And so, I mean, and here's the thing. That is true to some people. Yeah, they like, didn't change the perfect Barbie for a while. Like Barbie was yeah. perfect for a very long time, and that's what Margot Robbie is. She's like the the stereotypical yeah. perfect Barbie, and yes. that's why when when what's her name Sasha sees her, yeah, it's like she sees the perfect yeah. Barbie, and she's like, "You're not helping women in this world." Yes, and sh- and also all of the Barbies in Barbie Land think that they fixed the world because yeah, so of when that. she sees what's going on, yeah. she's like so confused. She's so she's like, "Where are the women?" Like when she goes to Mattel, because then Mattel ends up like whatever because they've had this incident before with the barbie getting out they're like we got to put her back in barbie land Mm -hmm. so mattel comes to get her she goes with the higher ups which will ferrell is like the like guy at mattel and she's like well where's like your like uh like the owner or whatever and he's like that's me and she's like oh well where's this one and it's another man and it's another man and she's like well where's the woman like where's the women he's like like, oh well one year they had one and (laughs) maybe another once like whatever and he's like don't you dare like pull that on me like whatever 
and because they, they think we're crazy <laughs> no that's what i was about to say it's so funny how defensive that men get when women bring to Just, attention that there are no women are no lesser than whatever on the like board yeah. or like representing your company <laughs> like, but you're trying to speak for little girls yeah when he said i'm trying to make little girls happy as i can in the less in the least weird way possible <laughs> like, <I was> like, <laughs> you're can't. trying to make little girls happy but you don't have a single women of power you don't even know uh, what it is no, to- literally and so she basically starts running and she's like i'm not going back to barbie land whatever mm-hmm. she ends up finding who has been playing with her is the girl that she met at the school sasha mm-hmm. it's actually her mom and she works at and mattel she works at mattel but like lower than like the, yeah. the higher up men and she had been making these little like drawings of like depression well, barbie yeah. or like whatever or no imminent thoughts of imminent death barbie and that's what barbie was thinking of that's why and she that's was so why. confused yeah so she was like oh my god you're the one that's been playing with me so then they all go back to barbie land mm-hmm. and she's she's so excited to show them like how barbie land is that women run everything here yeah. and that it's so awesome and she goes and the kins have taken over because ken went Found back to barbie patriarchy land is. and he taught them about patriarchy and how to treat women so then like the doctor the physicist like they're all in these like very revealing outfits yeah. and like you know serving them beer and like doing all this yeah stuff. they're like waiting on the men back yeah. or the kens in yeah. barbie land it's and like completely switched yes and they pointed out all of the kind of stereotypical things that men will do like <laughs> one time <laughs> when they were like sit down and act like you haven't watched a movie and listen to them explain it to you yeah. like you can't like, just like, like come to a conclusion yeah she's like, like are you, you watching the godfather like, can you actually ex- like talk me through the whole movie yeah. can you just talk the whole entire time <laughs> like that's lit literally they think that that's just so superior oh yeah no and then it was like the whole entire like glasses thing like take off your glasses and act oh like, you look more you look beautiful yeah. when they take the glasses off like yeah. what or like let me show you how to do this with like sports like let me show yeah, they you they showed like every single sport and yeah. how men will come up behind you and try to teach you how to play this sport. yes the unnecessary sexual they just want to be like, innuendos yeah they, they just want to be like alpha and yeah. just be, feel, feel like they have the power because they're like men yeah they want to make you feel like they are superior they are more superior than you are and that they know more than you with everything and they're they really yeah. depicting that pretty well i will say though because then she gets into the speech because they've realized what's going on barbie talks to ken and is like literally what did you do yeah and he's like men are powerful yeah he's basically like men on horses are awesome and mm-hmm. this is my mojo dojo casa house yeah. and you're not in it like this is no longer the barbie dream house this is the mojo dojo casa and house and you can tell the way that it's like now decorated just giving like almost like frat boy house no that's what it was because it was like just a bunch of random stuff thrown yeah. together mini fridges yeah the, the mini fridges the guy effect <laughs> yeah um but then, then when they try to, they go back to the weird barbie to try to come yeah. up with the plan to, but barbie is like giving up yeah barbie is not having it so then the mom who barbie who played with this barbie she gives like this whole speech and like that speech i feel like was a little too like i like how they were being very like not like telling you like outright what was going on yes so when she gave that speech i was like you're kind of like giving away how we're feeling and i guess maybe it's for people that like aren't like maybe getting it it was like a spe- powerful speech yeah 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 i just feel like it was so like specific of what what was going yes, on and but long it felt like like i had liked like how we've been talking about the whole entire time how they had been doing the i i've always said this in books and movies and tv shows show us do not tell us yeah that's what and that's how i felt it, like switched fi- yeah like just for and it was a long speech too yeah it for was a long, long time she's telling us what's going on and was it right absolutely oh, yeah, 100%. it was completely right that's what everyone's been saying and talking about in yeah in the real life like, and it's like the, the speech was great amazing and i did love the speech but i did even feel like in the moment like why don't you just like show and convey this but i guess on the flip side of the coin you can say like people aren't going to get it unless you put it in their face and that's why i think that they ended yeah up, like doing it but she used that speech to like unhypnotize all of the barbies and then yeah. so that they could get barbie land back and then the funny scene where it's like the kids <laughs> are playing guitar at them yeah they're like just playing guitar and at them four hours later and they're yeah. still playing the guitar like I on the wanna, beach but i have been listening to that unironically <laughs> the ryan reynolds push i wanna push you around <laughs> and also that song choice yeah. immaculate oh, yeah. immaculate i was singing it when it was coming on oh no the, same the, i loved it and i'm just kin but listen here's the thing the barbies end up getting barbie land back because the kins fight each other they I didn't turn like the whole fight scene I oh no i didn't like it i don't know i didn't love it and like yeah. him singing was a little too long <laughs> like ken was singing for a while oh yeah no well i didn't like the singing intermixed with the fighting i didn't like the fight maybe scene. it was that the guitar scene i think was just funny they should have like yeah 
I don't know. It was funny though because they would the Barbies would get up and like switch places. So then the kids they, that were yeah. singing were like, "Where are you going?" Because they, they don't like have their the attention kin. anymore. Yeah, and they would go talk to the other kids. So now they hate the other kid, and it turned all yeah, the kids so against all the each kids other. Fought. And the fighting was yeah. just, I don't know, a little silly. It was funny though because then when like so the guys from Mattel go to the Barbie Land as well, and because the Mojo Dojo like Casa House was like leaking into the real world, whatever, and they were like, "We have to fix this like right now." And all of them on the yeah. bike going, <laughs> all like fifteen bike. men from the. But then when they went in, they were fighting. He's like, "Did I just get shot?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that what was funny actually. but the barbies get barbie land back and basically like all the barbies are celebrating the kins are like you know eating their defeat and well we had the i'm just ken song and this is where i talk about what i liked about what they did and there was a message here's what you guys men are forgetting is that there was a message for the men as well in the barbie movie and it wasn't just treat women better and respect women it was that you don't have to be the patriarchy has said that you have to be this is not what you have to do you are enough you know (laughs) you are enough the way that you are and you don't have to you like be whatever you want i'm just ken where Where she loves she sees a friend it's a great song no i sing it 24 7 or so good anywhere else i be a 10 at the end though when barbie thinks she has to apologize to ken and Ken is I still saying, like, trying to kiss her and trying to, like... Yeah, but... Like, it, she, he's still being a guy and, no, like, being annoying. Yeah, but it but it was realistic to the point where, like, yeah. even when a, it showed that when women are talking about traumas that they have, this is how I took it, where it's like, well, maybe you shouldn't have been, like, a bitch or whatever mm-hmm. when you're coming out. Even when a woman is very consoling and very apologetic and very nice to a man, they're still take, always going to take it the take wrong it way. Because she apologized for doing nothing wrong. Yeah. And he's just sitting there, like, still saying, okay, yeah. now can we, whatever? Yeah. And she's like, you can be your own guy. Like, Barbie, it can be Bar- the it Barbie be, and it can be the Ken. Yeah, it can be just Barbie and just Ken. Yeah, like, you know, not just because she made us together does not mean yeah. we have to be. And I also saw a theory that she never felt that way about Ken because did you well, catch when this. the girl, when the woman was like, I never had a Ken. Yeah. And it's because her never, like, playing with a Ken doll never it like never showed barbie to depend on a man yeah it was like i got my girls yeah she had all her own jobs yeah. and stuff but i did appreciate i did think that it was a nice thing even though she didn't she shouldn't have had to apologize mm-hmm. when she did say like every night didn't have to be girls night yeah you know? i yeah, liked that she part gave, yeah that was sweet because you could tell her his feelings that it was like every night had night. to like change i mean yeah Ken went a little crazy but yeah yeah no and it was like I, I did like that part when she was like, not every night has to be yeah. girls night. Yeah. But it showed when then he like transforms back to this like better version of himself. And I, I, or the, I the pre-ordered sweatshirt? off of Mattel. It, I, oh, they sell it? Yeah, they it's like a pre-order. I don't know when it's coming out, but I ordered I it. I saw it and it looked comfortable. It's from Mattel. It's oh, from Mattel and it says, I'm Kanaf. Yeah. Because I love at the that. And when Ken becomes, he thinks he's Kanaf, he wears this little, like hoodie. It's like fuzzy and colorful and it says, I'm Kanaf. And it's really, really yeah. cute. And I said that because... I've been seeing guys like um, post and this is like I don't know I don't want to say this because it's kind of like the Russ situation when I said that I felt like Russ was just profiting off of something that he knows that women enjoy Mm -hmm. to try to get more streams on his music when he started talking about the Akatar books and like clearly didn't read them but acted like he did and he was just trying to like profit off of something that he knows women enjoy and I I've been seeing guys on TikTok and they do like the I saw somebody get like a Kennergy tattoo or they're saying Kennergy I'm like that is not it no you are Kenneth. That yeah. is the good thing. It's the crazy energy is not good. Boys and men can watch this movie and just still take the totally wrong message. Oh yeah. It's so crazy. Oh yeah. And I've been loving And they're like, oh, the- but I'm not a girl. Like I don't understand like I don't get what you get. But like we're showing you. We literally visually just showed you oh, in yeah. an hour, two hour movie. But here's what I said. It is important for girls and women to watch the Barbie movie, but I feel that it is also important for men to watch yeah. the Barbie and movie. That's not all men were bashing. It's just oh, the no, not all men. It's just like <laughs> guys that act like kids yeah i do appreciate though because the the movie it's like it borders on like the message and being like a deep message for women and everyone to see that message and then also like the cheesy barbie stuff going on yeah it's still, like I light loved, and fun loved how they ended it like absolutely oh my loved. gosh it was so good and when she so while she's in the, the motel she's trying to get out and run away from these men she goes to this see old woman's creator. house and she, it's the creator and they don't say that until the end but i knew in my head that's yeah. who it was while the movie was going on oh and it was just so sweet because she comes back at the end and she's like telling barbie like why she created her yeah and who she could be well that 
part too because like so when everything like they get barbie land back she talks to ken and then she's like well i don't know like i don't know my purpose anymore like i don't feel like i belong in barbie land and the creator shows up it's like the ghost of the whatever like she's like long gone yeah and um she says you don't have she's like come with me like come take a walk with me and they talk about it and then she starts getting into the mother daughter message and also did you know that little collage like of all of the Mm -hmm. women that they showed was like people who were working on the movie it was like footage from their like women that they care about that they had like like margot robbie said like the one on the wedding day where like the girls like putting on the blush it's like her best friend and it was like women they care about but yeah when the quote and i'm pretty sure it says mothers stand still so their daughters can go forward and look back and see how far they've come And I literally, me and my mom were watching the movie, and I looked over at her, and, like, there were just tears that started spouting my eyes. Yeah, the exit really is, like, a deeper... And then it was doing the Billie Eilish song. Yes, it's, it's like, the Billie Eilish song plays, and then they give a collage of, like, it (gasps) almost looks like an old, like, even, like, a home video type of thing. And the the Billie Eilish song mixed with that, mixed with Ruth, like, talking about how Barbie should live and can live. It really hits, like, really hard. Literally, it (laughs) was... so good. Oh, my gosh. It was everything that, that last song really part does so it to me every time i hear it, even on like tiktoks and stuff oh no like i was having a huge mental breakdown last week <laughs> and i was listening to that song and i was usually like sobbing my yeah. eyes out because you don't you when you listen to the song it's like one of this end like you, you like the girlhood of like with yeah. your childhood and barbies and all this stuff and like seeing where we are now like you don't realize when it's over yeah until you look back oh yeah it really hits i loved it and i just think it was so important if no one has watched the barbie movie yet i would just i think it's a very important movie to see um the ending was amazing and especially when she decides to go into the real world and she's like i'm here to see my gynecologist yeah, she finally has a you know <laughs> yeah she that's like the first thing yeah. she's so excited for because yeah. in the movie they go up to the men that were like a cat calling yeah. her and she's like well i don't have this and then kind of like and i don't have that when he said no, i do have she, no she was like I don't have a vagina. Yeah. And he doesn't have a penis. He's like, yeah, I do. Yeah, he was like, I do. <laughs> she was like, it's just smooth. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. So and the then, first thing yeah. that she does, I, just I think was, that's a funny way to end it. No, that's what I was going to say. It's like a light note. Yeah. And also very relatable to women. But I don't think, I at least, would not be smiling to go see my Oh, no. It's so good. No. <laughs> no, I hate that. But it's an amazing movie. I didn't watch Oppenheimer. I don't think I'm going to watch Oppenheimer unless Oppen- it comes out on streaming. I was going to say, I, there's, I can't, can't even sit through a movie on my own bed. A no. three-hour movie in the movie theater. I think the longest movie I ever saw was Elvis. I think that was pretty long. It is a very long movie. I sat through Elvis. That's the longest I think I can do. But Oppenheimer, I bet a, bet a bomb and the history and yeah. science. And like, I just, that's nothing about that other than Florence Pugh and whatever his name is. is Killian Murphy. And I, did you see all the random people that are popping up in the movie? Like Josh Peck Josh is in Peck. it. Roderick from um, Die Won't Be Kid. Oh, the guy from it? Hereditary. Like all these random uh, actors. Hopper like, from Stranger Things. Yeah, Not I, Hopper, sorry, Brenner. I saw a TikTok and it was like, what does Josh Peck have any business being in Oppenheimer? And he was like an important role <laughs> oh, too, was I he? heard. Yeah, oh, I didn't he was like an important know. role. He like didn't have a lot of speaking lines, but he was like an important yeah. character within the story. I heard that the movie could have been like an hour shorter. They just kind of drag out a lot well, of it. Well, and here's like what I've heard from like, because I've listened to people talk about Oppenheimer and I've even said this, like it's such a like niche thing, but like sometimes when my dad's off work, he'll be like oh let's watch a movie and i feel like it's a movie that when it's on streaming service and my dad's off work like me, we as a family would probably sit down and watch yeah like you know like when we yeah. have time but i've heard that it is about the atomic bomb and i've like heard like when i was listening to the zane and heath podcast he was like um i if you know nothing about it you're going to be very confused because they kind of just like hop into the movie like yeah. everyone just well, knows it just about his story of like doing it it's about the man like, who made the atomic bomb yeah. and i heard like i said i haven't watched the movie but i heard he kind of has this like moment to himself which i think is a beautiful moment that i would like to see just google where, that one click. yeah <laughs> where he's like essentially i wish i could remember the quote but he essentially is like i have made this war weapon yeah and this is terrible like yeah, i made this crazy and this is going to cause so much destruction for the rest of eternity like yeah. you know what i mean like he's like he's a power he's created a powerful thing like he created the atomic bomb yeah and so i would see it when it comes out like on my tv yeah and i just heard that that was like a really good moment i there's like a quote that he says i wish i remembered it but i heard that it's like a very yeah. very beautiful quote i'm sure it's a beautiful movie yeah i do think i'm gonna watch oppenheimer at some point yeah. but it's like you have to it's just it's it's like whenever those movies that come out that become like a big thing i feel like i'm missing out if i don't see it oh yeah 
so I have um to. there are no other movies i feel that are coming actually october 27th the same day that 1989 oh. comes out five nights at freddy's comes out <laughs> I'm so i love excited. that that's the same night i'm so excited <laughs> for that you guys don't understand it's gonna be a great fall yeah did you guys do you guys want to know something what? you would honestly have to waterboard this information out of me <laughs> tell us so i hid from all of my friends that i was like a huge five nights at freddy's like i was Why? into it because like so when i was in elementary school i remember we had these things called netbooks and i like had it on my like little thing and i would bring in my ipad and stuff and i would play five nights at freddy's mm -hmm. and i think it's like actual trauma from getting bullied in elementary school for like liking playing those games because i've always been to like scary movie scary stuff yeah. and so it was like a scary video game and i remember i had five nights at freddy's one and two two was my absolute favorite and i like would play it religiously like i loved it so i thought like oh this is not cool this is not cool you know like i was like they this is not it. cool to like and so i would like look at like the lore behind everything the books mm -hmm. everything of like what was happening with the movie like i watched three hour videos talking about the lore behind you're it. dedicated and you love it no i am so i'm very excited and <laughs> josh hudgerson is playing the main oh, guy no, no way yeah <gasps> oh my god i'm so this excited. is iconic news he is playing michael afton and Aww. i am so yay i am so excited i wish i had something like that to look Genuinely. forward to and um i won't be watching this movie in movie theaters oh my god no but this is like <laughs> also kind of odd i'm telling you guys there's like layers mm -hmm. um when i was very little i'm talking six seven i remember my dad got the jigsaw dvds from somebody at work oh my god and we literally spent one of his days off laying in bed just watching the no. jigsaw movies i don't think i've ever seen that at Wait, a very young age no no it's no like no the, no do you want to play no. a game also this is a mandela effect we should talk about mandela effects in october like do spooky episodes right. and one of them's mandela effect do you know about that yeah it's a mandela <laughs> effect that i think i my whole entire life have thought that the little like the puppet thing was like do you want to play a game yeah it's actually i want to play a game which i my thing oh, is, I is I like, how can it? everybody know. misquote it i don't understand i think because once you like gets traction of the wrong one everyone just like assumes that's it and then it just spirals from there but and then like, no one goes back remembers to it being like do you want to play a game you know i mean maybe there was like a clip somewhere it makes more sense that it's i want to play a game because it's like obviously they don't want to play a game yeah. kidnapping <laughs> this but um the new jigsaw movies coming out which it's just it has like a special place in my heart which sounds so crazy <laughs> no it's just the thing you like um it's and fine. i was like i can't watch this in movie theaters i'm gonna have to wait till it comes out on streaming service because yeah. i have very bad anxiety just going to see like the barbie movie me too movie theaters terrify me especially terrify if it's like me. a movie like that where it's like scary yeah, a little no. bit cr like you know <gasps> which also is like such a sad thing yeah like, just no. going to the movie theaters is so scary because you're in this room with so many people and just pitch black dark at the movie is so loud like you have no idea of your surroundings yeah. at that point and we're in the middle and like the exits are so oh, far oh yeah when i went to watch <laughs> the scream movies and because i just couldn't wait for those to be on streaming service literally in scream 2 if you guys ever watch scream 2 the opening scene in scream 2 is that they are like going to the movie theater to watch stab and that everybody's like dressed in ghost face costumes and oh, that there's like a no. ghost face on loose that's like killing people oh, inside the theater no in high school i used to see all like the scary movies and i wasn't scared like back then i feel like oh no and like because it's actually happened before like somebody has yeah. actually went Please. to the movie theater and no it scares me every movie single time scare me and so i don't think there's any other ones coming out this year though well, for this to come out i have no movies to look forward to i don't watch movies though so i feel like it's fine oh I i'm like a movie i love yeah. movies i feel like I I don't know if I have anything. I have books to look forward to. That's exciting. What books do you have to look forward to? The um, rest of the year. I have Ruthless Vows, the second Divine Rivals. Okay. Comes out the day after Christmas. I just finished that. Yes, she did. <laughs> and then the, what's the third one after Ballad called? The Curse? The Curse for True Love. That one. So excited for that one. Yeah. That one's high on my list. Um, Can I say that I don't know if that will have a happy ending? I kind of feel like she's going to end it off. She's invoked so much pain that I wouldn't even put it past her. I, and if, oh. I know. There's like so many like theories of what could happen in that third book because it's such a cliffhanger that you just don't know what's going to happen. Like no. there's just so many like different paths she could take in that third book. Let me tell you this. If that book doesn't have a happy ending, I don't care how much I love it. I'm rating it a one star. I just want to <laughs> let everyone know that. I will bring I that do good love pain down. in books, though. Like, I, I don't. love... It's because, like, just like, for example, when we talk about The Summer I Turned Pretty, like, yeah. it it pisses something off of my mind so bad that I can't get over it. Like, I hold a grudge. Like, which part of Summer I Turned Pretty? Like, say if it would have been, like, Conrad and Belly don't end up together. Oh. Like, it would have made yeah. me so mad that I would have <gasps> yeah. rated the whole entire series in one star. Okay, yeah. 
I mean, I see that. I don't mean pain relates to a cliffhanger ending where you don't get a happy ever after, but I'm just talking about, like, the books. Like, she does a good job. Oh, no. I don't care about, like, if she gave me some pain along the way as long as I get my way in the yeah. end. All right. I, I think she's going to. There's no way you can leave a book. But if like I don't that. get my way, you guys, literally, you guys are going to see a one-star good read review, which, <laughs> hi, I'm back on Goodreads. Oh, yes. Did we, have, we didn't say that, right? No, we said oh, that on our vlog. Um, yesterday, I was updating. Well, I haven't done it in a while, but I like when I go on Goodreads and I see other people updating while they're reading yeah. and seeing their thoughts as they're going because Lauren has been doing that. Or she, she was reading Balance. She was giving updates on there and it was yeah. so fun to watch and like see her live read And I it. see people update on Goodreads all the time. Like when I'm on my bookstagram, mm-hmm. I see people like post little things on their yeah. stories of like their updates. And I think I was editing the pod episode and you were like going on Goodreads. And I think I said something to you like, oh, this is so interesting that you just like go on Goodreads and yeah. scroll through Goodreads. It's just such a cute way to like see what other people are reading but i i've been updating what i've been reading now like the page i'm on and like what i'm feeling at that point because i just it's fun because i've been like seeing what other people and then i told destiny i was like i know you have a good reason i know you don't, it's not updated or updated or whatever and i was like i would love to see your thoughts while you're reading books because when i'm with her and she's reading i can like hear her li- <laughs> live time thoughts but like when i'm not with her like on goodreads i like i update and i go on that app all the time yeah. so i told her she has to update it so we're trying to figure out because goodreads is such like an old school i feel like it's the just... way it like goes <laughs> like the way the website is programmed so old and yeah. i told Destiny, I like it like that because I just don't understand social media sometimes. Not social media is like websites i don't know yeah like apps like i don't i'm just such like a granny on them so i like the way that it is i do think there's things that they could fix like sometimes when people comment on like my posts i can't comment back to them like it doesn't let you which is so annoying well i just wish they would update it it feels like it's been like that since 2012 well that's why i think i like it because like it hasn't changed like i know how to use it i just wish it would though like i wish but i used to be like big on goodreads like i used to Mm -hmm. literally be like i used to post all the time even before i did like booktube i used to be like because i was scared to do booktube videos and so i would post on my instagram story because i was doing youtube but i would be like follow me on my goodreads if you guys care about like my Mm -hmm. book stuff and i used to like scroll through and like really like whatever and then i i'm trying to think like pinpoint when this happened it happened at some point last year that i just yeah. kind of gave up on goodreads well because you don't keep up with it it, it passes by oh, and no. it's like takes forever to fix it like i think it wasn't my tbr no it was my wrap-up i think it was in my wrap-up um for july i was like at one point i was like i think my goodreads says i'm in the middle of like 20 books because yeah. it's my fault but it is still annoying <laughs> But it's my fault because I should just turn off, like, the automatic um, oh, updates like when you're on, on your Goodreads, Kindle. Like when you're on your Kindle. I had to turn that off because it yeah. kept saying I was in the middle of so many books. Because I start, I start so them. many books on my Kindle. Like, if I feel like reading on my Kindle, I will go through and start so many yeah. books, and I'll delete them, and I'll never pick them back yeah, up again. Yeah, Goodreads doesn't, like, keep yeah. up with that. And so, I was like, oh, you know, it's too late. And then I literally told Sarah that because she was like, I was like, oh, you're showing... She was like, I wish that you were on Goodreads because yeah. I would love to whatever. And that's all it takes, everybody. <laughs> Sarah literally just has to look at me and be like, I wish you did. And I was like, you know what? Okay. And she like talked me through how to do everything. So then I spent like a good chunk yeah. of time um, fixing, fixing my it. Goodreads. So now it's updated and I find out that I'm like 26 was, books behind schedule. Yeah, that's okay. If you guys want to follow us, mine is LinkedIn where is my like it should be linked in my insert i'll put it in our link tree in Mine our bio is always linked i want to let everyone know it's always linked in my youtube and everything yeah me too but i'll put ours in the link tree in our instagram bio but if you guys because sometimes if you if you don't follow us on goodreads if you try to friend us there's so many notifications to like accept friend requests that's yeah. hard to go through and accept all you guys so i saw like it we need to accept them or decline them for you guys to follow us. It won't let you follow if you're, like, requesting to, fo- yeah. to friend us. So so just follow. Don't yeah. friend. And if you're fr- on the friend request and we can't find you or whatever, you can go on your desktop. And I think it lets you, like, revoke it or something. Because yeah. I've had that happen. And I've heard someone say, like, it doesn't work on the app. But if you go on the desktop, you can revoke that and try to follow. Yeah. Because there's just, uh, there's just, like, too many friend requests to get through. Well, and here's the thing. I think it's because people, like, when you go on Goodreads, you think that you have to friend somebody to see their stuff. You no, guys you can, can follow. just follow. Friend I, is, yeah, like, I follow people on there. Friend Friend is just like, um, what is it? Like, what's the difference between friending and following? I, don't, I think it just shows you when you go on another person's profile, like friends with, like whatever. Yeah. I don't really know if there's like a big difference on Yeah, it. there's not. You guys can follow. Like, I like, I was going to say, I have a bunch of followers on there. <laughs> no, I found out that I'm the number three most followed. Yeah, that was crazy. She's, what was the other one? Like, world, what was it? Globally I'm the number three, and then I'm the number seven. <laughs> It was Apple crazy. Up. She has like achievements in Goodreads of being like the most how. followed. I literally don't it's insane. know. How. Can I tell you guys that? Because we just looked randomly to try to fix her her Goodreads yesterday, and it just it said it so right funny. under her profile. I don't know if it will still say it. Yeah. Number, number two. two. Oh my gosh, she's number two most filed, most followed, and global 
in the last 12 months she was number five in the yeah. united states alone she's number four yeah so in the last 12 months i'm the number five most followed this month i'm number three and this week i'm number two <laughs> this is crazy that is actually insane <laughs> like how is that even so a everyone thing? go follow destiny on well, goodreads and it does motivate me to review more because i do miss that though because i think what it is is like when you get into like youtube i feel like my mind is in so many different places yeah there's a lot of different platforms to keep and up sometimes with sometimes i do think it comes from a form of my anxiety which is so annoying i hate that everything relates back yeah. to that especially know, when guys. you got like so behind on it well no it's not even that it's just like it's the okay i have a notion that i keep up with and then i'm making a youtube video i'm talking about a youtube video and then it's also going to be in a wrap-up yeah. but does anybody care that it's on good reason i'm also talking about it over on my yeah. instagram story it's a lot to keep up with and i'm also going to make a reel but i should make a tiktok like it's it's listen i i know i'm not oppressed in literally any way this is like first world problems but still yeah. it's just something that stresses me Organizing out it is hard but and i just miss though like when i even when i started booktube and i was so into it like i would sit there and spend like 10 minutes on a review on goodreads yeah. well what i like about goodreads is because our videos they go up like weeks after we yeah. read it and our wrap-ups are only once a month so like when i'm updating on goodreads if people like follow me on there they see like real time like what i'm reading it what i'm reading currently they can yeah. keep up with us kind of real time yeah which i think is fun i don't really write reviews ever unless it's like a five star i'll like say oh my god best book ever but yeah i think it's I fun i think i stopped because um i think that i like started thinking in my mind like if somebody sees what's on my goodreads that they won't go and watch my video i thought that for a long time too but i think there's like a few reasons i think that seeing what you're reading and like rating it they get more exci- maybe more excited to see yeah. your, your opinions on it like in like video form um and then i feel like i don't know i don't know i like seeing on goodreads because I'm waiting for like a wrap-up or whatever i like seeing real time and then they yeah. can go to the video and like see like thoughts and like because it's only like you're only like typing on there not even typing just like a, a rating because yeah. if they see a two star like oh like why did they give it a two star yeah or like a five star they want to see the reaction to getting a five star yeah and also sometimes some books that are on a video or sometimes sometimes there's books that aren't on a video that i just read yeah so, like on goodreads you could see like i'm also reading other books and that's the thing too because i feel like sometimes in videos i I, I am gonna try hard on can read so guys and i think also it gave me anxiety when i saw that yesterday because i felt like i don't deserve to be like the most followed on there no but you do people no, but want- I don't because people were like people i asked on my bookstagram i was like do you guys even care like i did a poll and you got a lot of you guys were like yes and then it made me so sad because I was like, oh my God, I'm like a terrible person. Like I haven't been updating no. my Goodreads. And then I was like, I should update it. And then I was like, okay, so like this is going to be a thing. I also think I just get overwhelmed yeah, very easily. Yeah, just pressure on it. It's just like a, a side thing for you yeah. to just update and whatever. It's also fun when you're reading, like sometimes I'll read like random books for videos that like aren't on my TBR or whatever. Yeah. And then people are like guessing what video you're making. Yeah, that is fun too. It's like fun. It's like a little community yeah. thing. I think it's so cute how involved Sarah is in the community what do you mean <laughs> like you go on goodreads and you do your little reviews and you're like yeah and then you go into your discord and you like talk to everybody it's so cute you're gonna be doing your reviews you're also in the community yeah but i feel like on discord i'm not very active because i know nothing about discord yeah. i don't know because my mods god bless my mods <laughs> oh my god because they like set everything up for me and everything's in a channel and like i'll be like i scroll through everything guys i literally scroll through everything but then they'll be like this sh- like hey like put this in this channel instead and i'm like if my own mods had to tell me like what yeah would be in? that was me at first when i first made my discord there's only two channels and i thought that was fine oh yeah and then same. i like i had a mod and she helped me create like the whole thing she made like a mock-up for me like there's people that are on discord like like a lot and i didn't even know what it like really was so that was like a group chat same so we have a bunch of channels too i don't know i like to i feel like i made friends in there yeah like i feel like i've, I've made like relationships through it. i think it's so fun because like sometimes i feel like i don't want to like have like like how we have followers and subscribers yeah like it's a separate community where it's like they're real people yeah. like i can see that they're real people because it's hard to like numbers yes. to people so i love seeing like their little profile picture i'm like oh my god best oh yeah like I real know. real people were communicating i do want to get i do want to get into the discord but i feel like i just know nothing about it if, that yeah, it's so it's, hard for me if it's, you don't I feel know like it's, it's like overwhelming built up yeah that now like i've tried to do it so many times like i'll go into like a random channel and i'll say something that i feel like fits in there and then i'll be like everyone i'm like oh uh, i it's don't overwhelming. know like, yeah discord is very overwhelming like, i don't know how to reply to somebody i feel like a grandma like I, i'm like i don't yeah. know how to reply it to took you. me a long time to figure it out well i just asked my mods like sometimes i don't know what to do and i just ask them yeah just, like, i can teach you That's yeah one thing i actually know yeah bless <laughs> them they literally do everything so i remember yeah. i had my discord and it was just like a book club we did a like we still do this by the way you can join both of our discords yeah sarah's mine's through mine's through patreon yeah. so it's like a subscription it's like yeah it's different 
a little yeah sarah's is through patreon but honestly her patreon is very worth it she's very yeah. like in depth with the patreon mine you just go on discord i have it linked everywhere if you go on a youtube video it's always linked you can join it and basically every month i basically made it for a community my thought behind making it if i could get to the point is that i just wanted like a place for all of you guys to be able to chat with fellow book yeah. people because like i understand that not everybody just kind of has that and yeah. so that was what really was my main goal is just to make a place for all of you guys well, to that's have people why it's to okay to. that you're not in it because that's all like my, like they're talking all day long like they yeah. have they're making relationships through there too with but each that's other what i wanted yeah. that was like my main goal it wasn't like when i first started because you also have to think like once things get bigger it's very it's and it's sad because it does make me very sad like it's very hard for me to like respond to every single mm -hmm. person and so my like goal with it was i want to make a community because you know like some people like they love the book community but like they don't want to make a tiktok account and they don't want to make a youtube yeah. account but they don't have like a Friends chat to talk room to. to talk to so yeah. i was like i want to make a place that is a respectful community everyone's welcome and you can just come in here and yeah. you can just like talk some people, to each other they'll say like they don't have friends in their lives that yeah. read books and they want to be able to talk about books with each other yeah, so, like the so, discord it's like a perfect little group chat yeah so i wanted to do that yeah. and so you guys can join that and basically once a month we pick a book and then everyone reads the same book that yeah, month or so like fun. there's even past channels i'm pretty sure you can go <laughs> in the past channels and if you read like one of our past book picks there's channels for that book yeah. if you want to have a thought about that book in there um up. literally Go shout out to on. my mods because they yeah shout out my mods you guys are angels <laughs> they are absolute angels but yeah i'm back on goodreads she's so, back i don't know it's awesome but are there any other releases that you're excited for i was trying to think but i don't really you said curse for true love and you said the divine rivals book everything else is next year i feel like like the magnolia parks four is next year do you know what month that comes out in I think it's PJ's birthday. Okay. February 14th. So Valentine's Day. Oh, Valentine's Day. That's so cute. Um, the book I'm reading now, Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I looked it up. It's a trilogy. And I think the next one comes out next year, but not till like November of next year. Oh, wow. Um, oh, Hopeless by L.C. Silver comes out this year. Oh, does? What month? November? I'm pretty sure it comes out, yeah, the fall time. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm excited for that one. I want to see if the girl that I thought oh, she said is going to be a love interest. Who is it? She didn't say the name, though she did she the just blurb. said the blurb no oh, but it never say the says their name in the blurb oh. never it I, just has a little blurb. it is who you think it is okay i guess yeah. that from the jump yeah. i literally guessed it from the, from the very first, first book, book. Yeah, i guessed it too. i told you that i was like i think that this who loves yeah. me because i had a little moment you can like tell sometimes when you're in a series like that where they're all like all interconnected standalones but you get other people from each book and you know whose book is gonna you can be, tell like, when they line. put little hints of I like who's gonna be with yeah you. little scenes that's what i just want to say an appreciation for authors really quick that like you guys have these brains I that like from the imagine. very first book everyone's yeah. mapped out and when you go back and like reread you can tell who was going to be with who and like yeah and connecting all like the dates and the, the characters and what their like lives and the timelines are is like it's so intricate yes. it's crazy that they're able to like create a whole like person's or people's lives yes i think that that's especially fantasy authors you guys your brains are like next level I, the way you can create plot twist characters politics politics alone <laughs> that's like magnolia parks i started rereading like sometimes i'll go through and start like <laughs> annotating the first one i'm not even kidding no you 30, do 30 pages in she's talking about things that happen in the third book that are just like mind-blowing like literally it's crazy because after you finish the first one if you even if you like hate the book like it, so much is explained in the third one and it's just crazy going back and just seeing because she's had it mapped out like writing the first one she knows what she's going to like explain in the third yeah. one she doesn't give an explanation she just kind of talks about things very surface level and then you get to the third one it's like wow you've had this plan all along yeah it's like yeah well i remember when i was rereading magnolia parks because i only had ever read the first book and i never continued on with the series and i always said this too like i always felt weird about the magnolia parks universe before i reread it because i remember i read it when i was doing a 48 hour read no, that's crazy. can we believe that i did that I did no. it for 48 hours 24 hours just completely knocks me out i don't know how i ever did that i don't that. know how you do that but i was trying to i was trying to like theme it so i was trying to read just again the mistakes that i made just thrillers for 48 hours hello i don't even think i can like read multiple thrillers in a month without getting bored yeah because i'm they, like they predictable yeah the way they pace yeah, are like, like the same because with thrillers it's hard because they all have the same storyline mm -hmm. to some point like they all the follow the same plot structure very, yes very similar and so i was like okay i'm gonna take a break and i'm gonna read magnolia parks i was so tired in the way that that book is written yeah it gets lyrical and it probably yes. just sounds like gibberish when and you're so, no it. it did i remember staring at the page and looking at it like this and i was like this is making no sense <laughs> to my brain 
and so i was like i th- i thought like i'm gonna have the second chance at some point so when i was rereading it i remember you were like even if you hate the first book can you please read the second magnolia parks book yeah. and i was like okay whatever <laughs> and then i'll never forget when i was like i told you i was like oh, well i'm gonna read the first one on four like i was like I, it was good like yeah. upon the reread because when you go into it with a different mindset it's definitely like a different story well and i went into it thinking it was like a regular like little cute like rom com <laughs> romance yeah. and it's not and, and i think that's what yeah. also hurt it's on a barnes table once as a rom-com and i was like people aren't gonna oh no not go into that liking well, it well because i read it like when it was doing this like yeah, it wasn't the poppy, at the yeah. like peak yet it was like kind of climbing up mm-hmm. i can remember there's like nothing to go off of no like yeah. i had seen like two tiktoks about it and mm-hmm. i had seen like the cover and i thought it was intriguing so i bought it mm-hmm. And then I saw more people reading it, and I was like, okay, but no one was talking about how it was a toxic relationship. Yeah. Like, no it's one was talking about that when I read it. Than other, like, romance Yeah. And then I reread it. So, yeah, you guys should definitely give that series a chance. It's very uh, lyrical. Her writing, I remember when I read Happy Place, I was like, wow, this kind of reminds me of Jessa Hastings' yeah. writing. Yeah. Very lyrical. I really liked it. Yeah, any writing that reminds me of Jessa. Yeah. I love. I'm excited to see, like, what book she comes out with in the future. I think she's writing a fantasy. I don't Wait, I don't know if it was a historical something or if she's writing a fantasy. She might be doing both. I don't know what she's really doing, but she's switching genres up. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. That's also scary as an author to do. Yeah, but her writing in a fantasy is probably beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, I don't have any new releases. Oh, wait, Iron Flame. Also, can we talk about how I literally attempted to get the, like, sprayed edges edition from waterstones just kept on failing like five times in a row i'm so mad about it sorry um but i'm very excited for iron flame the way that that book ended oh i'm so excited that's the only one i'm excited for this year we all know without me saying it crescent city three crescent city (laughs) three it comes out the day after my birthday the day after oh this is crazy it is insane you're gonna need to get that early oh i know hey sarah j mass so i didn't want to dm you this but i do want to say this publicly that i will literally sign an nda I will sign an NDA and you can put it in like a sealed package, like a dry sealed package and I will read it. But anyway, (sighs) we're going to get it. We talk about it so much. I feel like I've put it out there so much. Like, why is it not happening yet? If I get any arc, because somehow sometimes I get a random arc that whatever, I'm going to (gasps) get things we leave behind. Yes. It's coming out this year. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Why do I always forget about that? I think because I haven't, no, the other one came out recently. Yeah. I always came out, that out this one. year. Came out in February. I've been waiting for Lucian's story since the f- I read the first. I remember DMing Lucy Score, and I was like, the, I, "The way I need his story." I remember when I found out that things we hide from the light was about Nash. I was so, so disappointed. Mad. So mad. Like I liked that book, but I was so disappointed but that wasn't. I Lucian's. feel like authors do that one because they have to really build up the, the, the character that, that they know. Loves. Everyone. That's loves. like hopeless. Else, ever like Bo. People love Bo. Yeah. He's so like, there's a lot going on. That book is gonna be hard to read. Yeah. I'm to know it though. I'm really excited. Anyway. We can get Anyways. to our little ep- end of the episode fun thing, which I want to explain. Yeah. So, <laughs> so random. People are it, probably like, what are you doing? It was so random because basically yesterday, me and Sarah are sitting downstairs and I had seen a TikTok where it was like every bestie duo has like the archer. So these are Taylor Swift songs where it's like the archer or mirror ball. And I looked at her and I said, which one are we? Like who's archer and who's mirror ball? And she's like, I don't know. And I said, should I make a poll on yeah. the bookmarked page? And I was like, actually ask them other things. Too. No. And then she was like, yeah, you can do that. And she's like, and then she was like oh we should ask them other things like huh? and i said should we make a poll of, like a bunch of different things and see what the answers are and then that's our yeah. end of the episode fun thing so they're real here it is. it's just random like which one are which one's yeah. Des, which one's sarah so i think it was like the first one was like yeah who's archer and who's mirrorball then it was who's nick who's schmidt yeah there's fun ones and then it was like who's spongebob who's patrick which disney princess are we which yeah. starbucks drink we'll are we it. we'll get into them okay are you ready do you want to <laughs> kind of want to guess why do i want to make you guess i don't know okay. I, i'm bad at guessing it's a, okay who is mirrorball and who is the archer so who is mirrorball this one's close so i got 52 percent. you got 48 we're oh only four percent okay. off there okay and wait then, which one's mirrorball that one's like the i'm a mirrorball yeah what's the like, just for you what's the thing behind that one didn't you not want to get mirrorball no i want a mirrorball i feel like i'm so mirrorball it's like you are very mirrorball like it, almost like a people pleaser like when you're in front of other people like making sure that they're yeah. they're like you're reflecting like the the goodness for them yeah to, so they're like they're okay that's a very good song anyway i think that that captures you <laughs> <laughs> and then the archer I got 40%, you got 60%. Oh my god, wait, because... <laughs> I feel so called out right now. <laughs> so do I, like, low-key. Because the bridge, be like, they you see right, right through. through. I'm like, okay, guys, go ahead and call out all my insecurities. <laughs> I know, that's why it's being a mirror ball girly, like, an archer girly is so, like, I don't know. 
I do feel like that does fit us, though. I think so, too. You know what? I do feel like that fit us. This and the next one, I feel like, are the main questions I've always had for our yeah. friendship. And we always... Tr- the next one, we try to figure out on our own, and we, like, kind yeah. of couldn't figure it out. <laughs> so, if you guys watch New Girl, there's Nick and Schmidt. They're, like, the best friends of that show. Yeah. And I was always like, who's Nick and who's Schmidt? Because I feel like either one of us could be yeah, the one at any time. There's different personalities that both of them have that I feel like could fit either of us. Yes. But we're about to find out. Oh, my God. I'm so scared. Okay. okay. Who's Nick is first, isn't it? <laughs> Who won? So, <laughs> Nick, I got 27%. Oh. You got 73%. <laughs> we said this didn't we say we ended on i said on. i was nick and you were schmidt did they say you were schmidt yeah i got 69 percent. oh my got gosh 31. it was like a landslide for both yeah. of those like everyone I, w- I wish you guys could like tell us why hey can you explain this one hey guys should we just post and we go can you guys explain to us why we're nick and who's schmidt that is actually so interesting i know i'm trying to think of like the vibes that they give off wait and why did the songs match schmidt is 100 percent mirrorball I love him. He's so funny. He's my favorite character on there. Schmidt. Nick is 100% the archer. Yeah. Wait. Uh, you know what? I always thought I was Nick. Always. Because he's a little grumpy and he's a little like... <laughs> I resonate with Schmidt. <laughs> I do. Res- and I resonate with Nick. Okay. The next one was what era are we? Like which Taylor Swift era? We put Reputation, Speak Now, 1989, and Folklore. Okay. What did you get? You were first, weren't you? Yeah. We. Okay. Wait. Wait. No. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what era am I? I got Speak Now, 35%. These ones were close. It was either Speak Now was 35 and 1989 was 31. Reputation was you 7%. You didn't get Reputation? I am Reputation. Sarah wanted Reputation so bad. I, I said, I feel like that's so, I don't know. Big Reputation. Yeah. Be- I honestly only um, identify with Reputation because it's like the color theme is black. And I, the way I'm wearing pink right now, but just no, I love to wear black. That's it. Okay, and Wednesday. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I am so Wednesday. Okay, I'm We're so like the characters in, in Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. I'm Ingrid or whatever her name was. Okay, what era is Jess? You got 1989. <gasps> yeah. 33%. I didn't want Lover. Did I put Lover as an option? No, Lover wasn't an option. Thank God I didn't Your want Lover. Your Lover was also reputation, but you got 13% reputation. Oh, what were the other ones? Um, Speak Now is 26% and Folklore is 28%. Okay, so Folklore was the second place. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, Which who is Spongebob and who is... <laughs> okay, who's Spongebob? <laughs> Spongebob is dead. There's no way. With 77% and I have 23. And Patrick, I got 81%. <laughs> wait why can you guys please explain these these I are getting personal that you would have got Spongebob because he's like always super optimistic and like very like whatever and Patrick's just like there. Patrick's like a little airy up here. <laughs> what are they trying to say what are they trying to say <laughs> you're like you, offended they saw me having enrichment time and they're like okay <laughs> let's let's actually give patrick <laughs> yeah and i'm wearing pink. <laughs> all right next is which harry album are we Ooh. okay i'm excited what'd you get <sighs> not the one i want oh you didn't get I got harry's house 58 <laughs> percent harry's house why guys can you tell maybe us? because i was like posting a lot during harry's house era that's my explanation i wanted it just one that's my favorite album of his okay i got, I got, I got 12 percent <laughs> of ages one no, you got... I think you wanted this one. You got Fine Line. Oh, yes. That yeah. is my favorite Harry six, album. 60% Fine Line. I love Fine Line. Can you guys... T- actually, can you guys actually... If you guys voted on these polls, can you please let us know why Give you voted? Give us an explanation. I'm like, I, mean, I, I want to know. I'm be thinking about this for a while. Yeah. Okay, what type of romance are we? You know, I got 5% for sports. That's the lowest. <laughs> um, I got... Oh, these are close. Okay, Small Town was 34%. That was the highest one. Cowboy is 31 and Childhood Friends is 30. I'm surprised Sports you didn't get Cowboy, baby. I know, it was close. Okay, what I get? You got 30% sports was the highest. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you... What about me screams athletic? Maybe they're, maybe they're talking about what we read most. I do not read a lot of sports romances. Didn't you just read one? Maybe I read maybe, one. Maybe that's why. Maybe because you, you said you were reading my life. <laughs> you DNF'd it. I DNF'd it, by the way. <laughs> Um, the next one is what dog are we? Ooh! Aw. <gasps> What'd you get? I got Cocker Spaniel. Oh, Thank that's what you wanted! God, I didn't get Chihuahua. I was nervous for a second. I can literally guess what I got. Go ahead and show me. You got Golden Retriever. Yeah, Look how I high your it. percentage. You got I 77%. It. I knew it. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> I got Pitbull. Aw, <laughs> oh, Pitbull only got eight and five. <laughs> Justice for the Pitbulls, Justice guys. They're for so them. cute. Adopt more from shelters, please. You heard it here first. Okay. What Starbucks drinks are we? Okay. Oh, mine was really close. Mine was a strawberry refresher, 45%. <laughs> and yours was vanilla sweet cream cold brew. I knew it. 46%. I knew that's what it was going to be. Yeah. Because I talk about coffee a lot. I feel like that's Those why I got close. that one. Um, next is what princess are we? What princess? 
Oh my god, Ariel got three <laughs> percent. Rapunzel got four. Um, I got Belle. Which is I knew you were gonna get percent. Belle. I knew that. I love Belle. Do you, I are you guys basing this year. off looks? And probably. Mm, I, I suggest that. With her. Yeah, because you got seventy-one percent for Rapunzel. <laughs> guys, can you let us down, down below why you guys got Rapunzel? <laughs> Go ahead and feed my ego a little bit. Oh, that was all of them. Aw, why am I so sad that we that didn't was so do more? Fun. But that took me a long time to do this one, so I'm kind of glad that there were more. If you guys comment other things you want us to like, um, what's it called? Do? Do. We will, <laughs> we'll do the polls again. Why was that fun? That was honestly so fun. It was I liked fun for it. you guys. I don't know if you guys enjoyed that. I liked it a lot because it was personal. Yeah. I can't believe I'm an archer girly. Now I can make the TikTok, we can make a bookmarked TikTok of us being Mirabal and Archer. Okay. We can make one of those TikToks. We should make a TikTok today for the bookmarked podcast. Yeah, I mean, but we should also post that one. Okay. We should just post 10 TikToks we actually today. We have a t- I said we said the last episode. No, last it's one. fine. We need to shout it out. So We're basically gonna that's the today. end of today's episode. It is the end of today's so episode. So this, today's episode is a long one. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, you guys know what to do. If you are a audio listener, then you guys should leave a five-star review if you feel it in your <sighs> tiny little amazing hearts. Well, <laughs> big hearts is what you guys should be to give us a five-star review. <laughs> and um, just leave a review. And then if you guys are watching on our YouTube channel, always be subscribed. Like, comment, all of that stuff. And then you guys should keep up with us over on our Instagram page to participate in future polls such yeah, as it's this so one fun. We, do, we do a lot yes. on there because we like to have the interactive at the end of the episode sometimes. yes that's They're why fun. we do the end of the episode fun things because we try to interact with you guys a lot yeah. with them and uh do a little fun thing at the end of every podcast and then also like we were saying we do have a tiktok we've had it for a while <laughs> we just never said it no we, we started it. it i like we like made it last month and we haven't been together and we feel like that's something you have to like plan yeah. out we'll, face we'll to take face. a few today and we'll just like save some yeah. to upload then, through the week um also i'm gonna start working on putting like reels and tiktok talks up from clips of the pod we'll be so, more active yeah we'll try to be more so active so <laughs> we'll add it to the link tree i don't think i put it in yet because we haven't posted yeah because we haven't posted but we have got a few followers on there so yeah thank you guys so thank much thank you guys so much and thank you guys so much for listening <laughs> we love you. you and appreciate you as always <laughs> and we will see you well we you guys will hear us in your little ears next thursday <laughs> love ya. bye bye